Today I'm going to talk about the sum if and sum ifs formulas. I use them a lot in building out interactive dashboards. So here's an example of a new interactive dashboard I just built out for my analytics dashboard course participants for them to be able to just plug in with their Google Analytics data. And I use the sum if and sum ifs formulas quite a bit. So let me explain how and why you would use it. First of all, you'll notice here on the actual dashboard, I have this drop down here, and this is where you can choose the marketing channel. And when you choose a new marketing channel, so for example, organic search, and I'm gonna go ahead, no, I won't zoom in. You can kind of see it here. I'm zoomed out so that you can see at least the full perimeter of the dashboard within the video. But if I change it to organic search here, you'll notice the entire dashboard updates. In fact, when you scroll down, you'll see the, the updates. And if I change it now to referral, everything updates once again. This is showing metrics for last month in comparison to the year over year to see the percentage increase or decrease. And this is uh, the data segmented by device category, so desktop, mobile, and tablet. That's important to look at as an analyst or marketer. And here you see the channel performance for each. Uh, and here I have another layer of interactivity. And if I zoom in here, let's see if I can. I'll just zoom in on the individual chart you'll notice that not only does this chart update if I choose a different marketing channel, but I can also select each of these metrics. So if I only wanna see sessions, you'll see the sessions for the past 30 days. If I wanna see goals, those will be added in, but they kind of get dwarfed by sessions. So you'd probably wanna turn off sessions so that you could actually see your goals. And then you can add in revenue here. Uh, same over here, except here I'm using option buttons. Everywhere else they're called radio buttons, but here uh, this is just showing the sessions and this is for the top five referrals. Now, depending on the medium or the channel that I choose, these will either be social referrals or organic or referral uh, or whatever. But So those change depending on which segment I choose. And then we can see... Uh, sessions, goals, and revenue to see which of your top five uh, sources are generating the most revenue. And then here we see a breakdown of the goals. Now I'm going to zoom back out a bit. And let's look under the hood to see how we actually go about doing this. So the way I set up a dashboard is I will have one tab with all of my raw data. Now I'm using the Google Analytics API to bring this data right into Excel using my favorite API tool called Analytics Canvas. I have more about that in my Analytics dashboard course where you can learn how to use Google Analytics, the API, and bring the data into Excel using the API plugin and then sexy it up in Excel. It's a very, very comprehensive course that you can check out. But here I have all of my raw data from Analytics Canvas and, and I don't do any calculations on this data. I just kind of break it up according to how I want my dashboard organized. Now if we go to the calculated data tab, this has the calculations for all of my dynamic charts. So if there's anything that requires a calculation, maybe it's uh, year over year percent delta or anything like that, these calculations are done here. Now, if you just wanna see all the formulas, you can press control and then the tilde key, which is just above the tab key, and you're just gonna see all of your formulas. So these are all the formulas that I'm using in the calculated data tab. You'll notice that even my titles are dynamically driven. So if we go back to the dashboard here, you'll see that depending on what I choose from the dropdown, so let me zoom in here a little bit. So if I change this to organic search, then the titles of the individual sections also update. So now we're seeing organic search, channel performance organic search, and then key insights, that's not dynamic. 
Oh, and channels overview organic search. So these are all my formulas. I'm going to press control tilde again to change it back to all of my values. Now I went ahead and highlighted all of the cells that contain a sum if or sum ifs function. And those are here and also over here. Little bit of backdrop here. You'll notice over here we have a list of all of the channels that Google Analytics gives us in the channels report. So I'm using a combo box over here on the dashboard. Everyone else calls it a drop down, but in Excel they call it a combo box. And depending on what I choose here, we'll see these values updated here. So right now I have all chosen. And so in the calculated data tab, all is the first value in the list. And so that's generating an index of one. And then I'm using a simple index formula here to uh, generate this value here. So if I then change this to organic search, this is the second value in this list. And so this is generating a two because it's in the second position. And then this index function just says, okay, go ahead and for the array, look at B8 to B18. And then for the row number, look here for the row number. So if it's chosen a two, then it's gonna return organic search. So that's a little bit of backdrop here. So what I did here is this is just referencing this value here. You'll see calculated data, that's the name of my tab, C10. So that's here. You don't have to do that. My formulas could just reference this. I just like to keep things as neat and tidy as possible. So now let's jump into the meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna start over. So what I have to do is come up with a formula that will dynamically say, okay, if the value that the person selects is all, then in the raw data, go ahead and add up the sessions for all desktop, regardless of the channel. So if we go to raw data, this is the data source here for that particular chart. So here we have the channels, and this is how the data comes from Google Analytics or the API in our case. We have a list of the channels, a list of the device categories, which is just gonna be desktop, mobile, or a tablet, and then the sessions for each. So what we're saying is if, if the value is equal to all, then go ahead and add up all of the sessions for desktop because we're under desktop here. And if I'm in the mobile column, then add up all of the mobile and likewise for tablet. But if all isn't selected, then look at the value here, which is just gonna be equal to the value here. And now we're gonna use a sum ifs function as pretty much like a multi-criteria V lookup. So we're gonna say if, let's go back over here, if the channel is equal to organic, because that's what we have selected now, and the device category is equal to desktop, then go ahead and grab the sessions. Now in this case, there's only gonna be one row that matches both organic and desktop. So it doesn't actually technically have to sum in anything, but this is a really good way to do a lookup when you have more than one criteria. So let's look at what that looks like. So first I'm gonna put my equal sign in here and I'm gonna use an if function. And what's my logical test here? I'm gonna say if this value here, and I wanna lock it down because I'm gonna drag this across. So there are some references we're gonna to have to lock down altogether and some that we're gonna to have to lock down partially. So I'm gonna press F4 on the PC, Command T on the Mac to lock that. And we're gonna say, if this equals all, and we'll just type that in. You have to enclose it in quotation marks because we have text. Then what do we want to do? We want to just use a sum if because we only have one criteria. It only has to match desktop. So let's look at these arguments here. The range refers to 
what's the range that we want to match? And the criteria is going to be desktop. So our range is going to be this range here. But since this is a dashboard that I want to update dynamically, then I want to give myself a little bit of breathing room and it's totally fine to have spaces in here. So I'm going to take it down to here. And I've indicated what cells my formula will refer to by coloring them this light gray color. Now this, I'm going to lock down in all directions. So I'm just going to press F4 once while I still have that selected. And the reason for that is that when I drag this cell across in the calculated data tab, I don't want this to move at all. I still want it to reference J8 to J45. So that's our range. Our criteria is going to be this cell here. So it has to match organic search and we're going to lock this down. Now, in this case, we actually don't need this calculated data here because we're on the calculated data worksheet. But it, it's not going to hurt if you leave it in. I just like to clear things of as much clutter as possible. So now our next argument says, what's your sum range? So that just means, what is it that you want to sum? Well, we want to sum sessions. So we're going to scroll down to the end of the gray, and we're going to lock this down in all directions. And that's my sum if. That is the formula that I need if F8 equals all. But now our next task is going to be, what if it doesn't equal all? So this is where we're going to use a sum ifs function because we have more than one criteria. So now we need that range that has all of the channels to match this cell here, organic search, and we need the range with all of the device categories to match desktop. And then we need to sum the sessions. But the order is a little different on the sum ifs function. So we're going to start to type in sum ifs. Hit the tab key if you're on the PC. If you're on a Mac, you can't hit the tab key. You can hit the down arrow key to choose your selection if you want it to be all capped. Otherwise, don't worry about it. You can have it lowercase. I just have vestiges of OCD and I kind of like everything to be all caps. It makes it stand out a little bit more. But so now the order is juxtaposed with the sum ifs. With the sum function, we had the sum range last. With the sum ifs, the sum range is going to be first. So what we're going to do is go into our raw data, and we're going to choose our sum range, which is this here. We're going to lock it down. Now it's asking, what's our first criteria range? Well, we'll deal with the channels first. So we're going to select this for the criteria range and lock that down in all directions. And what's our criteria? Well, let's go back to calculated data and it has to match this. And you need to make sure that this does match exactly. Like one of the problems that I ran into when I was building this dashboard is it wasn't working for organic. And I realized that in this list here, I had labeled it organic. But when it comes out of the API, it actually says organic search for the default channel grouping. So that's just something to be cognizant of. Now it's asking, what's the criteria range to? So we're going to go back here. And our criteria range to is this list of device categories. Now be careful that you don't want to select the heading itself. Only grab the values. So we're going to select these. Go down to the bottom of the gray once again and lock it in all directions. And now what is it that that needs to match? The second criteria is this value here. Now, in this case, we don't want to lock it in all directions because when I'm finished with this cell, I want to be able to drag across and pull in mobile and then tablet. So I want it to stay in row seven, but I want the columns to update. So I'm just going to keep hitting F4 or Command-T to cycle through my options until I get the dollar sign 
in front of 7. So that means the columns here can update, but we need to stay in the seventh row. It's not really that important that we lock down row 7 because we're only dragging it across one row, but it's just a really good habit to get into so that if we had a whole data set here and we had to drag it across and down, this would stay in row 7. So now let's go ahead and close that up. And there we go. Now I can drag these across and it all updates. Now you might be asking yourself, hey, you know what? Why don't I just use a pivot table? And you could do that. So let's say I select this and I go into insert pivot table. Now I'll go ahead and put this on a new worksheet. Let's see, I could pull device category down here and I could pull channel down into my filters and then pull sessions into my values. And if you're not familiar with how to use pivot tables, I have a video tutorial on how to use them where I basically take you by the hand and walk you through it. So it's not intimidating at all. It's very, very simple. So in this case, now if I select the channel from here, these numbers are going to update and I can even go in here and create a pivot chart from my pivot table. Now obviously there is a lot of junk in this chart and if you know anything about me, I hate having all of this uh, distraction in a pivot chart. So I would actually clean a lot of this up, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just making the point here that this really does the same thing as what we're doing here. A couple problems. One is, in this case, I have everything updating based on one drop-down menu. If you use a pivot chart, these values here are going to be associated with each chart, so someone would have to select the channel from each chart. The other thing is, these things are ugly as hell. I absolutely hate all of these tabs. I don't think they're very intuitive, so I really don't like them. One other serious problem is you can't use a report filter on the Mac. In fact, Excel for Mac doesn't even support pivot charts yet, which is terrible. But you can go ahead and build a static chart based on a pivot table, but you're not going to get this drop down here. Or the, this isn't going to work for you. So one other problem, even if you're just working in the PC, you could also, by the way, use slicers. Uh, slicers aren't Mac friendly, and I really try to stick with features that work on both the PC and the Mac. But one other problem that you run into if you're building out a dynamic dashboard is pivot tables are not dynamic. I mean, they're dynamic in this session. So if I open up this workbook, I can change things up, I can filter, I can use this report filter, but next month when I have new data, if that data updates and let's say we do more with mobile or tablet or we have a new channel that we haven't used before or whatever it is, if we have more rows or Conversely, if we have fewer rows, then you have to go in and manually update all of your pivot tables. You have to reselect uh, the cells that they refer to and refresh all of your pivot tables. Now, that's not the end of the world, but when I'm building out a dynamic dashboard, I want everything to update dynamically. And so that's my end goal. And I know that if I use the sum if and sum ifs functions, as well as some others, like the if function, I use the if function all the time in building out dynamic dashboards. I also use the index function in conjunction with count or count a function pretty consistently. But I want to know that whether my data set shrinks or expands, my charts are all going to update dynamically. That way, if I build a dashboard for a client or in this case for my course, when someone else adds in their data, it will also update dynamically. So there you go, an overview of just some of the power of the SUMIF and SUMIFS functions.